guys welcome back to my kitchen so in today's video i'm going to share with you a super easy and delicious beef pot pie now typically when you have pot pies you have chicken pot pies but our favorite is beef pot pie so that's what we're going to be doing today i just woke up in the mood plus it's storming outside today again um so i want something a little bit cozy so I've got all of my ingredients together here. It's very few ingredients. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Um, I've got my oven preheating to 425 degrees. I've got a saucepan and a large skillet ready to go, sitting back here on the stove. So let's just go over everything and get started. Okay guys, so I've got everything set out, ready to go. I've got some potatoes here. This is just one large potato. You can do two medium, two to three small. Just um, cube them up. Um, these are about one quarter to one half inch cubes. And I've just got them hanging out in some water just to get out some of that extra starch. I've also got some corn and peas. You can also add celery to this. I usually keep some on hand, but apparently they've all gone. So. Apparently somebody's been having some snacks of celery. So I've got just peas and corn here. I've got some flour, carrots. Uh-oh, I'm knocking all my onions down. I've got some onions and for my spices, my spices are very, very basic. You don't have to use this set of spices. I've got garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, parsley, and thyme. You can use whatever you want, that's fine. I've got some butter and I've got some beef broth here. Now I like to use the Carrington Farms powder broth. You just add it with water. I just like the flavor of it and especially the color. I love the color of this. It's very nice and flavorful. I've also got some salt and pepper and I've got some cubed beef here. Now I just cut up a um, half of a chuck roast but you can do beef tips. Um, steak if you want that's fine so I've just got that cubed up and they're about half inch by half inch cubes it doesn't really have to be precise um, you can cut them larger or smaller to your preference if that's what you want to do that's fine and I've got some milk and I've also got my butter pie crust now um, I went ahead and made this and it's been chilling in the fridge and it's super super easy it's very very easy to make and it comes together beautifully it rolls out beautifully and um, it's versatile so if you want to make this for like a pie such as um, a chocolate pie or an apple pie just add um, some sugar and vanilla to it and you're good to go but this is just a plain butter pie crust you can get this recipe on my website the link is down in the description box it's also in the comment section so you can go on over there and use that you can also use store-bought if that's what you have on hand use it by all means use it so we are going to head on over to the stove i'm going to pop my crust back into the fridge so it can stay cold until i need it and we'll get this started Okay guys, so I've got my pans ready. I've also gone ahead and drained out my potatoes. And I'm just gonna add them to my saucepan here. Along with my carrots. Add those right in. And then we're just gonna fill this up with water. And we're gonna let this cook until the potatoes are tender. In the meantime, we're going to start on the meat portion of the recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started and I'll meet you right back here. Okay guys, so I've got my potatoes and my carrots sitting right back over here and they are hanging out and they're cooking. So I've got this skillet, a large oven safe skillet. If you don't have an oven safe skillet, um, just cook it in a regular skillet and then just transfer it into a baking dish. But that's why I like to use cast irons because they are so versatile. So I've got it over about medium low heat and I'm going to add in my butter. And yes, this is a lot of butter, but you're going to need this extra butter 
when we make the roux. So we're just going to melt this down. And we will add in our meat. Put that in the sink. <laughs> and then we'll add our onions. Now, if you don't like onions, you can certainly leave them out. My husband does not like onions to save his life. So, when I find the opportunity to sneak them in or to just have them in general, I usually put them in. So, to this, we're going to add in just a little bit of salt and pepper. You can season this as you go. So just add a little bit because we're going to add more later. And then just give this a toss. Make sure it's all nice and combined. And splatter it all over my shirt. So if you see something on my shirt later, that's what it is. It's butter. Um, I guess I need to go get my apron, huh? But anyways, I'm just going to cook this meat and the onions until they're tender and the meat is completely cooked through. Um, it should take about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. If you're, you can cut the heat up just a little bit just to get things going. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you right back here when this is done and we are ready to go to the next step. Okay guys. So it's been a few minutes and my meat is done. And I'm just going to add just a little bit more salt and pepper to this along with my spices. And then we're going to let this cook for about a minute or two just to bloom the spices. Give this a toss. Oh, it smells so good. I cannot wait to dig into this. My daughter has been wanting pot pie for about a week now. So, I figured I'd share it with you guys. I can smell those spices now. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh -oh, add in all of my flour. Try not to get it everywhere. And then give this a mix. We're just going to let this cook for about a minute or two just to cook out that flour taste. Now it's going to get really, really thick. And that's what you want because it's going to create a nice sauce when we put all of this together. So just cook this for about a minute or so, just to cook out all of that raw flour taste. Okay, and now we're going to slowly add in our beef broth. You want to add this in a little bit at a time, just to keep it from clumping up. So you don't get any large clumps of flour that isn't cooked when you go to bake this in the oven and it makes for a much creamier consistency so just add a little bit and stir it up make sure it's well combined before you add in the next and then just keep doing this until you've added all of your beef broth. And then when I get this all incorporated, I'll meet you right back here. Okay guys, so this has been cooking for about five minutes and it's thickened up very, very nicely. So now we're just going to add in our milk. And it's just gonna add a little bit more richness. And I've also gone ahead and drained out my 
carrots and my potatoes. And I've got them hanging out over there. I've gone ahead and rolled out my pie crust. I just floured my surface and uh, just rolled it out. It's probably about a quarter of an inch thick between, yeah, about a quarter of an inch thick. Maybe an eighth of an inch thick. One of the two. So now I'm going to add in my vegetables. I've also gone ahead and checked the broth to see if it needed any more salt and pepper. And I added just a little bit more salt to the mix. And my potatoes are fork tender. You don't want to cook them too, too long until they get very mushy because you want them to hold up to the mixture. So just carefully mix this in together. Now, like I said, you can add whatever kind of vegetables that you want. It's really up to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix this together until everything is nice and well combined. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off my heat. And kind of level everything out. Now when it comes to pot pies, I like the rustic look. You can do whatever kind of design on top that you wish. That is up to you. I normally just slap the thing right on top, salt and pepper it, and it's good to go. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got my pie crust here, and you want to be very careful when you put this down on top. Now like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to kind of smush the sides down, kind of tuck them up towards the pan and be very, very careful if you're using a oven safe pan because I don't want you to get burned. Okay, and that looks good. Give my hands a wipe here. And I'm just going to brush the top with a little bit of olive oil. You can do butter, avocado oil, whatever you desire. Get my little setup going here. I'm just going to brush the top with a little bit of olive oil. And this is just going to help it brown up in the oven. Don't forget to get the sides all over. right there in the center there we go just enough for the salt and pepper to stick now when it comes to the top you can season this however you want I just go basic because I think it looks pretty and I'm just going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper right on top you don't want too much because you don't want it to be too salty. Okay. And some pepper here. You can do freshly ground pepper. I always have just the regular pepper that you buy at the store already ground up. So just add that right on top. However much you want. And then you're going to take a knife, which I forgot to get, and then you're just going to poke some holes right in the center just to let some steam escape. That is kind of off center, but it'll be all right. It's going to look pretty. And then just kind of open them up just slightly. You could do as many or as little as you want. And 
And then all you're going to do is pop this in the oven and you're going to cook this for about 15 to 20 minutes, give or take a few. It really depends on your oven. Um, because all ovens, all oven temperatures vary. So just keep an eye on it. And when the top gets nice and golden brown, just take it out. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in the oven and then I'll meet you right back here when it is all done. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And if you want this recipe or any of my other recipes, check out the description box below. The link to my website is down there and also in the comment section. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.